Here we see a very nice uh, median uh, sagittal slice of the tongue. Here's the anterior portion. Here's the posterior portion. Here's the epiglottis. The uh, anterior portion of the tongue is completely different embryologically, innervation, taste bud-wise, muscular-wise, every way you could think of than the posterior part. It's almost like you have two tongues. Nevertheless, you can see that the tongue is mostly skeletal muscle covered by a non-keratinized uh, squamous mucosa like the rest of the oral cavity is. There may be a little bit of light keratinization in the mucosa of the hard palate, because it's hard. Uh, it has to uh, a more brutal contact with food in that area rather than the softer uh, portions of the rest of oral cavity. Notice we have in the posterior portion of the tongue uh, an ulcer, irregularities in the mucosa, hemorrhage, but even more noticeable is something that looks like it's growing deep within the muscle. These are primarily the intrinsic muscles here. This muscle kind of coming out this way is probably the genioglossus muscle. But you can see that this infiltrating, ulcerating process starts at the base of the epiglottis and pretty much uh, extends through the entire posterior or glossal part of the tongue. Um, and even perhaps comes into some of the anterior portions of the tongue. So what is it? Because the tongue is covered by a squamous mucosa, a tumor of this mucosa would almost certainly be a squamous cell carcinoma. And you could see it is. And here are all the irregular blue infiltrating nests. And here's an area that was ulcerated. And here is an area perhaps more anterior from our photograph that is normal. Here's a normal uh, non-keratinized stratified squamous mucosa. Here it is extending to the ulcerated area. You can see all these tumor nests along the ulcerated area. And you can see they extend uh, and infiltrate the underlying muscle. In this area here, it looks like you could see some nice orangish type uh, keratin as well. So it may be more well differentiated or more obviously producing keratin in this portion than it might be, for example, in this portion, which doesn't look as heavily keratinized. Let's zip up a little bit and see uh, if we could imagine that this orange area might be keratinization rather than necrosis. I think it's keratinization. You want to know why? Because it looks orange and we already see necrosis along here and perhaps along here. It doesn't look anything like this more orange stuff here. Plus it looks like the orange stuff kind of blends in with the cytoplasm of the tumor cells as well. It has the same type of texture. So this is probably a keratinized material from the tumor as is here and as is here. Whereas these lighter areas um, especially the ones here that have some inflammatory cells are more likely necrosis. In addition, we could see the classical squamous pearl, which is a world collection of tumor cells to look like a little pearl. And if we want to just go uh, high power for a second or two and look at the nastiness of the individual cells, we could see exactly that. We could see these little orange areas representing keratinization like here and here and here and here. And we can see some big, nasty, ugly, pleomorphic, hyperchromatic cells. Here's the nastiest one. Here's a one in mitosis. Here's a mitosis. Here's a mitosis. Probably here is one. So even if this was the only thing that we saw, we would suspect it is a very uh, pleomorphic uh, squamous cell carcinoma 
But remember, because we saw pearls uh, in certain areas, by definition, that would put it into the more well-differentiated category. And let's find a pearl. Uh, we already saw a couple of halfway decent ones. Here's a real decent one over here. Squamous pearl coming up. And look how these cells just kind of whirl to form little tumor nests. Thank you very much. Infiltrating squamous cell carcinoma of the tongue.